In this lesson, we'll define and illustrate functions in continuation of our understanding of relations. A relation f from non-empty set A to non-empty set B is called a function if it meets the following two additional requirements. The first requirement is that domain of relation contains only distinct elements means that no element in the domain of relation must be repeated. And the second condition is that domain of relation must be equal to set A. Let's take an example and we'll illustrate this definition of function with help of this example. Let A is equal to first 10 natural numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on up to 10. These are first 10 natural numbers or first 10 counting numbers and there is another set B which is also set of first 100 counting numbers or in the first 100 natural numbers. So that would be 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on up to 100. Now a relation F now relation F relation F from A to B we know that relation is a rule which creates association of elements of set A to elements of set B. So, but under certain rule. And what is that rule? Now, relation F from A to B is defined as is defined as and here we are going to state that rule and that rule is is length of side is length of side of a square of a square with area with area. So this is that rule. So what it will do this rule will take an element of set A and will relate it to the area of a square in set B. If one is an element of A under consideration, if it means that here we have a square with length of the side equal to 1, then what would be the square of that? What would be the area of that square? That would be 1 times 1 means 1. So 1 will be associated with 1. So under this rule, under this rule, what would be the first pair that we can get? For 1, the area would be 1 and if the length of side of a square is 2, then what would be the area of the square with side equal to 2? That would be 4. And similarly, for 3 it would be 9 and for 4 it would be 16 and for 5 it would be 25, for 6 it would be 36 and for 7 it would be 49, for 8 it would be 64, for 9 it would be 81 and for 10 it would be 100. And because there is no element after 10, so we have to stop there 
and then we name this relation as F. This is the relation F which binds elements of A to elements of set B under this relationship. And what is that rela relationship? Is length of side of square with area. So set A provides the lengths of sides and set B provides the area of square. So that's how they are linked together and then we make pairs and write them in tabular form like this. So if we were to write this table for a bigger set, let's say that we extend this set A to 1000 and extend set B to 1 million. Would we be able to write this much? If we extend, let's write this extension. If we extend, if we extend this concept to bigger sets, to bigger sets then we obviously are going to face problem because the number of pairs will become so large that we won't be able to write them. So that is our that is our problem that if the domain or the first set A is extended to a larger set and set B is also extended to a larger set then we obviously are unable to write all the pairs because the number of pairs become so big that we can't even think of writing them. And let's, before we, we do that, let's write down the domain of this re, uh, relation. So what is domain of this relation? Domain of F is equal to this collection is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And you can see that every pair in this relation does have a number which appears only once. So none of the pair has an element or a number in the first position which is being repeated. So we can say that domain F contains, so let's write down this one, contains, contains distinct element only, distinct elements only. No repetition, no repetition of any number in the domain. And second, Second thing is that you can see that domain of domain of F is equal to set A as well. So both of those requirements both of those requirements are are uh, satisfied. This means this means both of the requirements both of the requirements are satisfied are satisfied so relation f relation f from a to b is called is called a function is called a function so now we will come back to our question of what if this happens if the if we extend this concept to bigger sets so this is now we are going to do that 
uh, answer, try to answer that question. If we, if A is equal to, if A is extended, extended to set of real numbers, set of real numbers, which is R. R and B is equal to R as well. Then how will we redefine this relation? Then redefine relation, redefine relation F. And this time we will say F from R to R is defined defined as is length of side of a square side of a square with area with area so the rule of association didn't change. The rule of association is still the same. We are going to take element from set A, which is R in this case, and we are going to associate it into element of set B, which is again R in this case. But the problem is that R is such a big set that the number of elements are countless. There is no counting. We cannot even think of counting real numbers. So writing that table of values is not an option anymore. Doesn't matter how long we, t it, it, we, we try. We can never write the uh, table of values. Now what should we do? We can simply state this rule in the form of, in, in, in some mathematical expression. So let's, let's define this. Let's try defining this mathematically, mathematically as table of values, table of values is not an option anymore, is not an option anymore because of the number of pairs, not an option anymore. So. Here what we define that rule of association is we let's try to do it pictorially and for that purpose we are going to draw a circle here or oval shape here and draw an oval shape here and let x represent okay this is the starting set r this is the ending set r and the rule which we are defining is named as F. It is very important that we name that rule. And what it does, it takes an element of the starting set R. Let's name that, that as X. And it transforms it into X square. Because if length of side of a square is X, then area will be X square. So you see, this is a generalized form. This is a representation. This is just a, a, a generalized idea. So this is what is the beauty of mathematics that instead of writing whole big table of values, we have said the exactly same thing only in one sentence, just using two letters. 
so what x is representing x is representing an element of set a which is r here and it is mapping that into another uh, number which is x square and x square is called an image of x under f so we can say that x square is equal to f of x square so what it means is that x square is equal to image of x under function f this is how we read it and if we were to write x square as because it's a different set and it's a different number so if you are not comfortable writing it x square you can also write it y is equal to x square like elements of the second set r could be named as y1 y2 y3 and we can just write them so this is how we define functions from set a to set b so we'll try to illustrate functions using another perspective in next lesson